going for this. Although this is a game that I wanted to see, so I am happy about it. It is CE versus the A team. The A team were able to become victorious against the team that just won one SBT RPG earlier on today. For a CE, they were taken down in a 2-0 via the 1, but it was a pretty close series. That it was, especially game number one in which we had that crazy, unheard of uh, core race, core battle, if you will, where in which, uh, you know, so many details came together to form this one big chaos at the end. And, uh, you know, the one they were able to come out on top here with a 1% core hold. I definitely uh, recommend watching the VOD for all the details and how things actually shaped up to uh, to even end in this uh, superb ending. So yeah, now CE of course playing against the A team, and the A team is that big X factor today. I would say, are they really as good as we thought they are when they just dismantled uh, RPG 2.0, and RPG looking pretty decent now against SPT? Or was it more like RPG not really you know being there yet, being a little sleepy, drowsy, whatever you want to call it? I'm not sure what to think of it. Tetra, what is your take on it? Do you think we're going to see a 1-1? One, one, maybe a little bit of a bigger upset with a 2-0 for the A team? I, I agree that the 1-1 one, one is a possibility. I don't think the 2-0, depending on how much... I don't know, actually. The A team have shown repeatedly that they mm. have done a lot of research when it comes to their drafting against the enemies. So if they are able to punish some of the more obvious members of CE, then they might be able to make some plays. But... I'm still leading towards a 2-0 for CE, maybe a 1-1 if the A-team play really well. All right. CE, man. They lost a couple of points here quite literally against uh, the one earlier because they weren't able to get any of it. They were defeated 2-0. So in order for them to stay in the race, you know, to get themselves into a good position during the playoffs, they need every point that's available. And so, I'm curious what maps we will be seeing, also as a reminder for everyone, as we always do. Uh, we see the key players, Alufal. Yes, with sir. With Tracer being his key player, but super out of the meta, and Ulele for some reason shows the Vikings, <laughs> which convinces me that these are taken from Hero League. Uh, yeah. Or maybe even from Quick Match. Uh, but the last few times <laughs> these teams played against each other, it was a 1-1. One -one. Yeah, definitely not HGC statistics here that we see with the Vikings showing up here. I mean, for Lufal, Tracer still makes sense, although he hasn't played Tracer. Tracer altogether hasn't actually shown uh, seen any play in China up to this point because of the most recent damage nerfs to her. Um, you know, that still could have been an option. I would actually love to see it at some point again, but uh, the A-team, they're relying on other, ch uh, on other heroes and other uh, characters, I wanted to say. You can rely on the Illidan these days. Even Mouthfail, strong weapon coming in from Bruiser. But now the first map is decided, and it shall be the Volskaya Foundry. The first one of the day? Or was that what was there one earlier? First or second, yeah. We, we see it pretty right. often these days. Um, but yeah, that's a good question. Yeah, it might have been in the first series, if I'm remembering correctly. I am not. So yes, first Volskaya of the day. That is good. That is pretty cool because we love ourselves a little bit of all sky foundry, man. It's easily one of the most entertaining battlegrounds because there's so much going on here. We've got the conveyor belts to create additional havoc. We've got the mercenary camps providing those useful items. Although I do want to say that there is a little bit of a trend, at least in China, in which a team that dominates the first healing pulse will then normally have an advantage because the enemy team is too afraid of fighting into the healing pulse and they can then accumulate so many items of snowball from there. So uh, mercenary control is of the utmost importance. Very true. And of course, multiple turrets as well can be utilized. We have seen repeatedly now teams able to get all five members with an item, including one time where we had one team with three healing pulses and two turrets, which is the most I've ever seen. I'm waiting for the five healing pulse team. Although, I will say, <laughs> I would argue having more turrets is better than having more healing pulses, obviously, I agree. because the healing pulses don't stack. Exactly. They don't stack, and the healing is oftentimes overrated, in my opinion. Either you can burst down the healing pulse before it does anything, or you can sometimes just burst through it because it's minimal sustained healing. But of course, in the grand scheme of things, right, if you take an entire fight with an active healing pulse, not only will it restore health, but also mana. So that is certainly uh, a very useful aspect about this tool. With Rainer on the board already. 
Deckard Kane as the first support already picked up. Wouldn't be surprised to see the A-Team uh, ban out the white main if it's not immediately picked up by CE. But CE, they have plenty of other options to oh, for sure. play around that. The Rainer first pick, though, seems to be a consistent theme at 4CE. They really like to go for that all the time. Just like KTY really seems to value his plays. Can't really blame him for that. Uh, Muradin, probably a little bit of a safer pick for Zhuyu than his Diablo last time. They even banned it around, so that's good to see. Now, what is left there? Lufal could play that, uh, Jimmy. It all depends on whether we're going to see another melee flex, for example, like a rotating thrall. Uh, Crash Lightning in China is still very, very popular, especially on this map. With white main removed. Like we said, the support options go a little bit lower down here, but there's so many good supports now. As long as they don't pick yeah. Alex Straza, I'm happy. Because no. she's so <sighs> easy to counter with Deckard Kane. I mean, just look at what happened last game, right? Over yeah. and over again, did we see uh, CCH's strong Emerald Cubes? And even when he didn't land it on uh, Alex Rasa herself, he was still so amazing at shutting down cell feeling on certain heroes like that Leoric that we see being locked in here immediately as well. Okay. So, yeah, not a big fan of Alex Rasa anymore. I would much rather have, let's say, uh, who's available here that could do the trick here. I wouldn't mind a Rhaegar out, honestly. I wouldn't mind a Karazim, not as susceptible to the anti-healing because he has longer cooldowns. Mm, yeah, I'd like the Karazim. Just, the problem I have with the Karazim is maybe the the Alarak might be a pretty decent mm -hmm. counter to it because you're getting in melee mode. Stuck off with a Spine Launcher perhaps might be a little bit <gasps> safe. Uh, Why? This is, the, is it their second attempt? It's the third uh, attempt in total in HGC China this season. It's the third attempt by the A-Team. Is it actually the 18 both times? It was times? always Olele, the man we see right now on the camera. He's played oh, it every boy. single time, and it failed miserably every single time. I have never heard you so distraught. Hey, team, <laughs> you can't do this. Da, 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 da. I mean, you can, but... <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, are you sure? Because it's not on the... It's not on Master League. So how many times has Olele played Zujin? Can you tell me that? Zero on Master League. I will hit. I will hit just Olele and uh, 18 in terms of stacks. Zero again. That's what I'm saying. No, that's definitely not correct. Then. Okay. Definitely not uh, correct. One Zuljin, one Zuljin on just Olele. So that's clearly not up okay. to date. Um, da, 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 da. Right. Let's see. It. So only once. So the other time, I don't know why, but I'm thinking the other time was RPG. Ah, uh, maybe it was Team Nut actually. When you know, when Seven maybe. Milk joined them for a short period of time, and they were just going. Like crazy all over the place, playing Lucio and all that jazz. Well, but no, I'm, I'm talking about this season. But I'm almost 100 percent sure it's 18. Aha. No, one A team, what uh one A team, one team nut. There we go. Okay, now we got things straight. There you go. Both lost. Uh <laughs> no, but I think we could have predicted. That. I'm not sure, honestly, Tetra, if Team Nut is the role You're model you sure. want to go for. <laughs> You're not sure? I'm really? Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we are preparing to head in. Can the trolling strategy of the A-Team overcome CE? Let us find out as CE are on the left-hand side. And playing for them, it is going to be a Luful XTQ 365 KTY and Zhuyu. And facing them is the A-Team with not such an A-game squad here, if I may say that. LK, Olele, Bruiser, Stugos, and Eatscook. Now, okay, let's... Get back down to business here. Series mode engaged. Uh, while I'm personally still not a happy man after seeing the Zuljin being locked in, it's not, you know, without any chance. There is still that yeah. that moment, similar to the Dignitas game that we saw on the weekend, right, in which they played Sylvanas uh, Butcher against the Monkeys. There is still that moment in which if you make it to the late game, if Zuljin snowballs hard on his stacking process, he can still melt people. So, uh, yeah. question yeah. is, they need to get there, right? Alufal, though, is looking to bring the paid with a Crash Lightning build this time. There is a Spine Launcher, exactly as I requested from 365, mm -hmm. and new habits from Blaze. Cool little reactionary play here to the Garrosh Deckard. Even the Alarak could potentially be dodged with that Unstoppable. 
Oh, nice prediction, Stormbolt there from Zuyu, getting himself a free stack on Lyric, who was already on the retreat there. KTY in trouble. The slows are good, and look at O'Lele unleashing the axes and dropping them all onto Blaze. And that is exactly the moment, you know, with strong crowd control, if you then continue to land your auto attacks uncontestedly, that's where you get those kills. Unfortunately for Zul Jin, those moments are not going to happen very frequently in all that team fight because there's always going to be Blaze, Murder, and even Thrall sticking up in your face and trying to prevent you from said auto attacking. So, Zuldin helps with the mercenary camps. Dugo is tanking that because, well, he can. His deck of Kane and the turret itself at uh, this stage doesn't do too much damage. What mount is that? Uh, which one? I don't know. The one Olele was riding immediately dismounts when I asked the question, so no one can tell. All right. Let, let me find out. We're gonna we're gonna pay close to atten attention to Zuljin mounting up the next time, while he is trying to uh, basically stay safe here, dropping a couple of axes here and there. The orc just barely makes it out to safety. Now, I love what the A team is doing, and I really hope I'm gonna see that in my Hero League games uh, a little more frequently over the next few days because. Alaric performs so well in the four-man, right? He's much better in the four-man lane these days than in a solo lane because in a solo lane, oftentimes his kill potential is wasted. Uh, and there's a lot of solo laners who can just stay safe against that poke damage right now. You know, Blaze, Leoric, even Amalthael there. The strong sons from Stukov, though, preventing Garrosh from using any abilities. Now goes the toss over the wall, just barely on the edge. He can't pick up the healing pulse yet, though. Still a battle raging on. Holding the line for the moment, KTY dropping low, the turret is bullying a loophole, the healing pulse picked up by the A-team, and a th triple kill in exchange for just a deck at Kane. Ooh, just barely out of range there for the Axis, but yeah, that looked so strong in my opinion for a long period of time because that silence was there. However, it wasn't touching the edge, the edge of the capturing platform, right? So Garrosh could step out of it, throw Murden over the wall, and that uh, caused enough confusion and bought enough time for the A-team to really pound on their opponents. And uh, you know what? That Zul'jin, if you leave it uncontested, it is going to be pretty, pretty hard to uh, sustain all that damage. I just and want to so, see that Zul'jin mount now, Tetra. Yeah, I'm you waiting for it. my oh, interest. Mount, oh. mount, mount! There we go. Is that a raptor? Oh, camera follow. It's not a raptor. It's four legs, and he demounts immediately. Juyu is very far forward, retreating towards the enemy base here. Scroll of Ceiling will oh, land, oh, and boy. the telekinesis silence by. What is happening today, Tetra? That A-team is looking super solid. Ten stacks already on Zul'jin. Could this be our first Zul'jin victory at HCC China? Accidental anti-synergy there. Correct Wrecking Ball use, oh. silent misses, and the axe though, the axe lands. Yep, finds a new owner. I'm pretty sure uh, Raynor didn't want to be the owner of that axe in the first place. So yeah, Zul'jin getting kill after kill after kill, stacking up even more. And in some weird way, in, in some unexpected way, the synergy between Alarek and Zul'jin is Pretty neat, actually. Pretty awesome to see how Alrek gets the target closer to the axe, and then Olele is going to uh, basically unload all of his damage onto that poor target. Horde against Horde, Zujin against Thrall. Uh, yep, there we go. Zujin is kiting backwards. Those potions have been looking another kill. really effective so far. Oh Shoot. my god! Getting bullied again. They're just ping ponging the map right now, and A team will take the first protector. I mean, you also have to look at this team composition of the A team, right? They have so much crowd control, so much knockback and, you know, tossing potential that how are you going to fight into this if you're looking at CE? I think in order for them to withstand all that damage, they're going to need level 10 with a bunker. But even then, do they have enough burst damage already against that Zul'jin? Not really, because only XTQ is really there. And Alufo seems to be struggling quite hard as well. Look at that. They're not even soaking top lane right now because they're being so occupied in the middle. The fort goes down. The A team is walking away, Tetra, in that early game. They are putting on a schooling right now but it's far from over ce they're not going to be 10 for a very long time but their level 10s allow for some super effective wombo combos so as such as long as they can protect another fort there will only be a structure behind they are currently a level mm -hmm. and a bit behind and as such we will see the protector get burned down and the fort will survive rocket punch does not land and you know what? CE even tried to uh, counter the Zujin pretty hard by picking Stukov. I think that's a talent we need to talk about. His level 4 choice, the Biotic Armor. It will provide physical damage whenever a heal is active. And if he activates the Bio Kill Switch, it'll be 35 bonus physical armor with the 15 uh, 
granted originally already that's 50 physical armor for uh, 2.5 seconds so they already have those counters but even that doesn't seem to be enough to stop the alrak to stop the zuljin from wreaking havoc level 11 to almost 9 for the a team i did not have axe puns prepared for this day but they are <laughs> they are moving through into top lane they're going to take down another fort and right now the a team look dominant they will finish this off before the minion wave goes down and that's making them look very good because guess where the next protector is? That's right, it's top. All right, so at this point, it looks a little ridiculous that Burden, one of the strongest tanks in the current meta, is getting absolutely pummeled by one of the least meta heroes you could imagine, Olele. But I think there is more to that than just, you know, Zujin doing well. Look at Bruiser. We mentioned this guy time and time again, how strong of a player he is mechanically, how well he plays the heroes he plays. And it looks like Ar uh, Alarak is now part of his arsenal there as well. He swaps people into Zujin's reigns. He interrupts uh, Dwarf tosses there as well. Super well done. And now Tazdingo is there for Zujin. So even if he were to get caught out of position sometimes, he could still tank through it. Exactly. So this is looking really good so far. They're going to go and grab a fortification camp, maybe even push bot lane a little bit if they want to. LK will be the one to push in initially and cleans out the minion wave. No Neil Peasants, so it does take him a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. Fortification camp is taken. CE were thinking about an invade pre-13, were unable to do so. Now let's actually take a look at items and how they're distributed here between the two teams. Uh, the Healing Pulse, of course, still in possession of Garage. That is really, really good for Eatscook. Now, how many turrets are there in the possession of the A-Team? Look at that easy escape by Bruiser. Not even breaking a sweat, the High Lord. One tower for him. Sorry, one turret. And maybe yeah, there's right, a second yes. one on Deckard or Zul'jin. I'm not remembering right now. I think Deckard has one. I'm not 100% sure, though, but mm -hmm. we will find out shortly. As a biotic emitter spawns in a minute, CE looks like they might want to set up for an ambush. Okay, LK finds Blaze, connects uh, the Drain pulse. Hope, forces him back. Doesn't even so use the Jet Propulsion, pulse. though. What? Double Healing Pulse, one turret is what the A-Team currently okay. have. Against one turret total from CE. Yeah, they move forward. And so Lele's dropping the damage. Here comes the Tord. That, that, that is a disaster is for CE good micro coming in from Zul'jin as Olele sends out the cleaving axe but Alufa with the chase does Dingo and Alufa gets right into the fray and Alufa and Olele is out of there what a play there by Itsuko dropping uh, Zul'jin out of the picture just when his Taz Dingo had expired what a man what a mighty good man there the horde is working together the former war chief against the leader of the Amani clan? Yes, that's correct. Okay, there we the go. Amani trolls. Good. That was an excellent, Amani exceedingly tribe, good play that made me very excited and exceeded <laughs> well all played. my expectations when it's going to make <laughs> CE feel very <laughs> exasperated. But Zuyu does escape. Now you're just Once exaggerating, Tetra. Come on. Well, right now. We're actually seeing a Lele getting <laughs> dropped pretty low, but he's able to escape. As Yitzkuk oh, falls between the Banshees no. chasing him down, he lives! And Olele picks up another kill off to the side with the help of Alarak, and CE are being exterminated. Holy macaroni. I When I saw this draft, and when, when I saw it being played by the A-Team, one of the bottom maybe mid-tier teams in China facing an absolute legend like CE. I would have never expected them to being uh, to be able to execute it so properly, so cleanly, and so focusedly as well. I mean, it's just absolutely insane to see them work together like, a, uh, like an absolute unit there. Garrosh and Zulji and the Dream Team unleashing chaos and havoc onto their enemy. And uh, now with that protector, that might actually be a 10-minute keep. They move in, looking for it. They're going to try at least, but Zhu is hovering around the side. Could be a problem if they're not careful. Olele piling on the pressure. Turret is still not dead. Finally will be finished off. The Banshee getting focused down a little bit by Olele as well. Will finally be full. <laughs> Execute! Back. Big jump and XTQ taken out by the Protector. Yeah, even the Bunker was used to save Rainer in the pickle. He found himself in the Bunker now too far away from Alufo. It's a complete disaster. The Simons is good on Eatscook, but he's too tanky. Three tanky, five CE. Let's see if they can actually save uh, the keep. No, they can't. The Protector barely alive. 
But still, he got Olele. what he wanted to do. Oh my. Olele is going pretty ham on Suzuki. I don't think he. I think he's underestimating the one v one potential of a Muradin. The rest of the team showing up after him though, and Zuyu is able to juke him masterfully. Potions do not give vision, and Zuyu will be able to pull back. Yeah, that's at least a little something here. A little light at the end of the tunnel there for CE, but it's a long tunnel still that they need to uh, drive through. Now, Tetra, I, I guess I take back what I said earlier. I'm, I'm very happy now that A team went for their pocket strategy. And we've been talking about this in the past, right? Every commentator yeah. at some point brings this up, right? How good are pocket strategies? How well can they work against, you know, clear favors like CE? And I think now we finally have our answer. Sometimes they do work. I mean, it's it's it, they're playing it well. It's the fact that the fact is the decade potions have been good. The front lining mm -hmm. has been really good. Counter Strike is dropped here. They are going a little bit aggressive though. Need to be careful. And the oh, massive so shove exits. onto Garrosh removes the front line, but Leoric goes into the back line. This it might just try and turn onto Surgeon a loop. The taunt is dropped, and that was a bit excessive, I would say. The taunt might not have been needed there, but they got it. Yep, it looks like Olele hasn't had enough yet. He drops the turn goes one intercept that he can use Tastingo though. Who are the the reaction, though. Getting wrecked, massive shove into the fort, but down goes Blaze as they continue to push He's forward. Cook. They've got no Torres. Yeezcook is tanking through it. Deckard. Someone stole the potion. Oh, and Lele stole the potion. <laughs> they turn it around. Now Lele's dying to the fort. What? Well, there we go. Potion okay. dropped, and they will take down the fort once the minion wave arrives. I guess now we all know why Garrosh turned so sour. It was all back in the days when a certain troll stole the potion, and he... <laughs> <laughs> You want to know why I'm so evil? <laughs> That's why Someone I burn worlds it. right now, because that troll stole my potion. Someone stole my drink. <laughs> and then, therefore, I decided to put a war on and eat an old god heart. Spoilers, sorry. Only they moves up <laughs> and put some pressure onto Zhu Yu. LK, just chilling around, putting on a little bit of pressure of his own. All right. I mean, CE, we gave them so much praise. We hyped them up so much because... We assumed that they would be in the best shape of that current phase here, you know, finally stabilizing with XDQ, playing better and better, more safely and more safely. But now all these dreams seem to be crushed and shattered as they lie in fragments before them. The A-Team busting out that secret weapon twice now already in this ongoing phase. But for the first time, it really seems to be working out now. They're trying to make something happen on Leoric. He gets the Drain Hope. Is silenced though. Can't oh, use shit. Wraithwalk. Leoric is there, but he will be back Ooh. soon. In the meantime, the damage on the backline is huge here. 365 completely zoned from his team, but that bunker's pretty clutch right now. Yeah, the bunker was great, but look at the health bars on the side of CE. They uh, blew all of their powder onto one target. Yeah, Bruiser with the double lightning. So much damage. Nice. So much damage. They focus on Zhu. You try to burn him down. A lot of damage done to Olele in the backline as well, but once again, he still has Tazdingo as they move forward, holding it for the last second. But CE not willing to hard engage, and the snipe from Alarak with the lightning onto Blaze as they chase a loophole again. Raider able to sneak away. Counter Strike is dodged. Nicely done. And Taz Dingo is good. A loophole getting chased out. Taz Dingo about to expire though. Yeah. No Lele. He has to back up because he's going to need to heal up before he can get back in action. Yeah, it's good stuff. You know, good move by Alufo to bait out the Tazdingo. That's a considerable cooldown now that the A-Team has to play around with. Um, but yeah, all of a sudden, uh, this is still looking mighty fine for the A-Team, right? They were able to kill Blaze again. Without Blaze, there's nothing CE can hope to achieve here in that protection point. Level 20 is around the corner there as well. We see Blaze also, sorry, we see Alarak here, Bruiser, doing terrible, terrible things to the enemy team. They were lined up so nicely there. I think he hit three or four people with those lightnings twice in a row. I just realized I could have said action, but I messed up. Oh, well. <laughs> As LK pulls back, he's zoning for his team, giving vision. Thrall is on the way, along with Blaze for CE, though. They are in control. Thrall finishes Silence. it. Sorry, Muradin finishes his perfect storm. March of the Black King. But you will be able to back up this time. Yeah, ominous Wraith okay. here coming online, hitting several people off CE. Armenia. Their damage is reduced, and Blaze gets popped to pieces. Make it a double, make it a triple. And these are some horrific acts of violence, but that is exactly what the A-Team need to do. The triple kill is achieved. Garrosh gets back on the point, and that will be another protector going in for them. They wrecked that bunker. That bunker just popped up and then poof, gone, deleted. There's just 
absolutely nothing they can do to stop that Zul'jin from uh, from tearing things apart right now. We're having so much fun, guys. I hope we don't mind the Axe Puns here, but it's very rare. It's almost uh, non-existent that we see a Zul'jin do so well in unison, of course, with Bruiser on that Alrek. In my opinion, without Alrek and his consistent knockbacking, I don't think uh, they would have gotten that many kills. So look at the damage. Look at the overall efficiency of those DPS, of those ranged assassin players here. Olele and Bruiser, yeah. we gave them so much credit already, but they are dismantling CE yet again here. CE struggling hard. CE's had a rough day today, losing 0-2 to the 1, and now are struggling against the A-Team, who bring out the Zul'jin, continue to pile on the pressure. The keep will go oh down, and Lufal will fall as well. Counter-Strike is gorgeous. It's a massacre. As they just move through. KTY gets the bunker out to heal on Zhuyu, though, so he's got... I was about to say he's got nowhere to go, but he literally just proved me wrong. As though they're going <laughs> to move on to the core as that begins to drop. <laughs> Nicely done. Oh my god, Bruiser is just... Uh, I, I'm pretty sure he's doing illegal stuff right now to Muradin. Like that, you're not supposed to blow people up like that, Bruiser. Yeah. That is just against the law. But guess what? If you're making the rules and you don't care about the laws, they take down the core, the A-team... They don't even show us the core because we want to take a look at those stacks and they yeah. did so much damage.